Pierre Polyev makes a speech to the press talking about how he's going to put Canada first. And I, for one, could not be happier. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. President-elect Trump announced that he was willing to put 25% tariffs on anything coming into the country that comes out of Canada or Mexico. And I can explain to you why he said that. And I tell you, I promise you that it's nothing to, to, to be concerned about. Will he be watching what's coming in? Will he be watching more for the source of where it's coming from? Absolutely. The simple, and the simple solution is for Canada to make it here instead of importing it from China. The simplest solution is to not have foreign investment in our country. To have Canadians investing in Canadians. Canada first. Which is what Pierre Polyev has finally said. And I couldn't be happier because I've been screaming Canada first for years now. All right, let's listen to some of the things that kind of, you know, it's a, it's initially it's a concern. But if you understand the personality of a, of a person like Donald Trump, then you understand it's a lot of bluster in an effort to make you understand where he's coming from, right? That's the that's the position that he's holding. Will he be rigid in that position? Is he like dealing with Stephen Gilbo? No, he listens, he understands, he negotiates. Stephen Gilbo, on the other hand is just, you know, a zealot. And zealots never do any of the things that are required to solve the solution. They just freak out. Anyway, that's a different video. I'll be talking about him soon. For now, let's listen to what Pierre Polyev has to say, the kind of an announcement that he's making in the kind of direction that he expects candidates and Canadians to go in. I am, for one, very excited. The U.S. is responsible for $1.2 trillion of our trade. We trade almost twice as much with the Americans as we trade with the rest of the world combined. Trade with the U.S. is 40% of our economy. President Trump yesterday made an unjustified threat of a 25% tariff on our already weak and shrinking economy. Yet 20 days ago, Christia Freeland said, don't worry, Canada will be fine. Apparently, neither she nor Justin Trudeau were following what the incoming president was saying. And now we must take account and we must be honest with our unprecedented weakness. Weakness is not, not a leadership quality. When it all hits the fan, what's the first thing you look for? You look for someone who's going to take charge. You look for someone who's going to lead you out of the problem. You look for someone who's going to have the wherewithal and the courage and the fortitude to do what needs to be done. These are not characteristics of many of the far left politicians that we possess in this country. And quite the opposite, actually, they, if you don't agree with them, they just try to shame you and embarrass you and humiliate you and then hope that their corporate friends will cancel you. Donald Trump's not messing around. He's got all the support of everyone in the entire country because the entire country is upset. They're finished with dealing with the far left. They gave him 10 years. 20 years, really, if you think about it, took the time it would have taken them to start to get all the right people into a position. They put copy, huge amounts of money behind it, and it failed. Now, I don't believe that uh, Pierre Polyev is correct in calling it an unjustified threat. He has to let people know where he's coming from. We need a plan. A plan to put Canada first on the economy and on security. So we hear him saying that we need a plan, and which I love in the sense, because how long did they stand up in Parliament telling that the Conservatives had no plan? And make no mistake, this is a campaign announcement that he's making. This is some of his portfolio that's coming out now. They always want to talk about how he should be offering solutions. Well, the number one thing that we need to be talking about is how the, the, the far left and their, you know, let's be soft leadership skills have brought us to ruin, have brought us to demise, and have permitted foreign countries to be marching up and down our streets, burning and rioting and demanding unreasonable things has put the women in our country. It's unsafe. And I know there is a small collection of women out there that are screaming to themselves. We don't need no help, blah, blah, blah. But the large portion of them, when they get into a jam, when they're getting scared, when they're getting frightened, they're saying, geez, I wish I had a man around to help me with this. Of course, now it's time that we talk about how, we have to bring that sort of masculinity to the fore because that's what's required. We need a strong country and a strong country needs strong people and strong people and strong community. These are the things that are required to make Canada the country that we are, that, that we can be the, to reach our potential. A plan on the economy and on military. 
these are not unreasonable things to discuss. And I believe that Pierre Polyev is on to something, or not on to something, but I believe that he's taking the right tact. I mean, incoming American president says he wants to cut gas prices in half. Well, the only way to do it will be to import more clean Canadian energy. So the prime minister has to stop this assault on our biggest industry. I want all of you to understand something. Most of the oil that we buy in Canada was made in Saudi Arabia, or at least, you know, was harvested in Saudi Arabia. We would be better off to get oil from Argentina than Saudi Arabia if you want to talk about how bad it is on the environment. I mean, those ships are huge and the ocean is very rough. But the United States consumes more gas than any country on earth because everybody has a car because they are a country filled with the middle class and only the middle class has money to spend in copious amounts in droves. So why would we not try to turn our country into the wealth that Saudi Arabia has? You know, that country that has oil barons by the dozens, it seems. Why would we not want that for ourselves? Why would we not want that kind of income coming into the country? Doesn't make any sense to me. The Americans are there. They'll take everything we can bring them. So we might as well give them everything that we got. Because that's what people who are trying to get to the top, that's what people who are striving to accomplish do. They give it all they got. No? You tell me down in the comments what you think about that kind of position. I believe that what we're hearing is part of his campaign platform. You know, he's got the slogan of those four things that he says, but he's now talking about the economy and he's talking about uh, the military getting stronger in Canada. The next thing he wants to be discussing is uh, the immigration issue that's going on in this country. And so now we can see that he's talking about, you know, even though he's doing it on the guise of it being all about Trump down in the United States of America, He's also talking about some very key points, key points that are very important to Canadians. His own published documents show there are 4.9 million people here temporarily that are supposed to leave by December 31st of next year, 13 months from now, 4.9 million people. We asked what the plan was to track their departures and yesterday his immigration minister said, we're just going to take people at their word. What is the plan to protect our security and reinstate sovereignty over who is in our country? Well, isn't that a strong position to take? We're just going to take people at their word. You watch these political channels and you think to yourself, million, you hear million this, you hear million that, and everybody starts to get maybe numb to the idea of what a million could be. I want you to think about being in a, an office or a classroom and Tell yourself that it might be 30 people in there. Appreciate how many people would actually fit if you were cheek to jowl, right? Shoulder to shoulder. Maybe you could double it. Maybe you could even triple it. And you still would be at 100 people. 4.9 million people is enormous. So when you talk about nearly 5 million people and these guys don't have a clue where they live, they don't have a clue what they're doing for a living, they don't have a clue how, how many people are living in their house, they don't have a clue in any way, shape, or form. They don't even know where they are. We're just going to take them at their word. Because when a person comes across the world and then they sit there for years, all of a sudden they're just going to up and do it again. Now you might get a small percentage that are willing to go back to where they came from. Most of the people that have come here of that 4.9 million are going to be looking around thinking where I came from. It's got nowhere near the comfort, nowhere near the abundance, nowhere near anything that you see. And I'm just going to borrow my cousin's ID. If anybody asks, my name is no longer what this is. It's that. So because that's how they're going to stay in the country. We're just going to take them at their word is that's the statement of the, uh, that's like, the, how weak is that statement? Military. Justin Trudeau has demolished our military with poor decisions, botched procurements, and wasted money. I will put Canada's workers and Canada's security first. We need a prime minister with the strength and the smarts, the brains and the backbone to stand up for this country, to rebuild our security, our military, and our economy. That is what I will do. Let's bring it home. Let's bring it home, I think, is a great way to, to launch this campaign. He's promising to be strong. He's promising to be determined. And he's promising to put the needs of Canadians first. 
That's not letting the small 1% voice in the corner try to tell us that every move we make is somehow hurting their feelings. We're going to have to remember that facts don't care about your feelings. And the fact of the matter is, is that Canada has a lot of resources in it that other countries covet. That Canada has a lot of things in it that other countries covet. That we are only going to ensure the safety of our children and the safety of our population by making certain that they are not thinking that we are an easy target, that we are not some sort of a mark. They have to understand that no matter where they come at in this country, they are going to be met full on, hard on by patriots and by people who are not going to back down, not sitting up there on the microphone talking about how we're all going to kumbaya because kumbaya went out with the 60s. Just to put it in perspective, I'm going to let you hear a question that come out of one of the far left media, which can only be described as ridiculous. On, on American trade, in your view? We can fantasize about other trade partners, but I'm interested in reality. We've been fantasizing for the last nine years, and look where it has got us. And right there is the problem. They, they think that all of a sudden they can just act childish and say, well, we can deal with somebody else. It's trillions of dollars. Why would you deal with somebody else? Because you don't necessarily like the way that they talk? Because you don't necessarily like the way that they might hurt your feelings or trigger you? then I suggest you just stay in the house. I suggest that you worry less about what's going on in the world around you and start worrying about how you are so terrified of a person disagreeing with you that you don't want your entire country to deal with them. Because we are flat broke, we are hungry, we are homeless, and there's a solution to that problem. And that solution is to go the complete opposite of the direction that we've been going. But how this juvenile approach that we just won't deal with you is exactly the problem. It's not about whether or not you agree with their politics. It's about meeting them halfway. It's about getting the job done for the betterment of everybody else around you and throwing a tantrum and saying, we're not going to deal with you because you want to be a big mean meanie. Is Those people have to be silenced and put out of the way. I get that they might have feelings that are sensitive and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not I'm not really worried about their feelings at this point. I'm worried more about the future of the country. And they are too. They just don't want to admit it. You take away all of their luxuries, and those are the people that are screaming first, eh? Then another reporter from the far left asked him a question about And they're trying to bait him, right, into saying, oh, well, why, why don't you be on the Team Canada bench and all this stuff? Like now the liberals are trying to make it all about how we're all working together. Just... A few months ago, it was, we make the decisions, the rest of you don't bother us, we don't take any advice from all of you. That's it, that's all, we're not even going to negotiate with it, excuse me very much, but we'll go on a trip. Now, when they see that the writing is on the wall and that it's all coming down, crashing, crashing down around them, and many of them might end up in prison for the actions that they did in the government, they're like, oh, let's all work together, let's all be Team Canada, yay, yay, rah, rah, sis, boom, ba. But let me be clear. We don't need as a spectacle of a bunch of politicians sitting around tables meeting and holding photo ops. I know that would be a wonderful spectacle for all of you. You would all enjoy that kind of interpersonal the theatrics. Um, but what we really need is an action plan with tangibles. So bottom line, Trudeau's got to ax the carbon tax. He's got to lift the production cap on Canadian energy. He's got to rebuild our military and secure our borders. That is a real plan to protect our economy and our security and put Canada first. And that's more important than photo ops and meetings between politicians. Canada first. I, well, let's put it this way. One, I only care about Canada. I want to put our country first. Two, America is responsible for over 60% of our trade. We trade more with the U.S. than we do with the rest of the world combined. I will do what is necessary to preserve and protect that relationship above all others. Awesome. There's no other way to put it. It's about time we stopped holding hands with all of everybody going, oh, kumbaya, oh, those big, mean, mean Americans are so mean with their meaniness. It's time that we grow up. The great far left experiment has collapsed. It has failed. Nobody is interested in starving, for your point. Nobody is interested in sleeping under a tree unless they have a nice hammock and it's just in the backyard of their house. 
Nobody is interested in being scared to send their children out to play. Nobody is interested in having their car stolen and leaving their keys at the door and turtling up inside their kitchen and hoping to, you know, hoping beyond hope that the person doesn't decide that they're going to come after the TV to put in the back of the car. Nobody's interested in living like that. No matter what you try to say, it's all going to be the same name calling that you've been doing for 20 years now. You're either some kind of an ist or you're some kind of a phobe. It's ridiculous. It's it's asinine and I will be talking more about it for now I want to say that I just love how Pierre Polyev said Canada first and he's going to do whatever it has to do to make this country strong I couldn't agree more I just could not in any way shape or form agree more now if he gives me control of the CBC I will turn it into a profit making venture no problem at all and if he gives me control of the military I will fix that too, one or the other. Now, there's a strong possibility that he doesn't know I exist. <laughs> but one step at a time. You got to throw your hat in the ring anyway, eh? All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.